64 players, the classic class system, industry-defining destruction, a new battle royale, and a studio defunct. Yeah, it's not looking good. Battlefield for the past couple of years has been good as dead for a lot of their fans. From the devastation that was Battlefield 5's marketing to the absolute disaster that was 2042's release. And for some selective few, the franchise has been dead for a longer period of time. Over the course of the past couple of days, we have started to get more information little by little from the project, all starting with this famous tweet from David Sterling, aka Tigger, aka the lead producer on the title. When asked how development was going for the game, he replied with all is well on the home front. This right here can either age like wine or milk, because countless of other times the development of games have said to be okay, but yet the final product was just a disaster, and for the past Battlefield, it's dealt with the same thing twice. Battlefield 5's player base left quickly after launch, and 2042's player base left even faster after launch, both with the pretense that the game was doing okay from the development standpoint. But an hour ago from me writing this, an article from Inside Gaming released detailing what to expect from the new title. First of all, he provides the information that the project is aiming for that October 2025 release date, making it line up with previous Battlefield's release windows. Now, whether or not the devs can wrap it up and release the title by that release date is completely up to them, because if a publisher puts out a date in today's age, more times than not, it's a suggested window, as it'll very likely be pushed back further by a month or two depending just how much more time the studio needs to fix and polish some things, or just make it barely presentable to begin with just trying to meet and please investors. God, I love video games. Nothing bad ever happens to the poor souls that work as developers. During EA's last investors call, EA's CEO, Andrew Wilson was asked about the development of the new Battlefield, which is where he would go on to say it's a reimagination of Battlefield, which came as a shock to the community just wanting that traditional Battlefield formula back, as people don't really want a reimagination right now, but rather a return to the classic feeling of Battlefield. But luckily enough, Tom Henderson claims that internally that is the mindset that is going through the studios right now. A traditional Battlefield experience, filled with 64 player matches, a return to its 4 class system, a complete overhaul to its destruction system, and set somewhere around the 2025 to 2030 time frame, with a strong story driven emphasis on modern technology used in war. Alright, when it came to the community at large, I feel like this is what people wanted when they heard about 2042, a proper return to modern combat with some creative liberties here and there. It sounds completely great from what's being said, but just like everything else in the world, everything always sounds good in writing, but it's until you see it with your own eyes, you can really judge it for what it is, whether or not it came up to those expectations or fell along the way. While this article makes no mention of a story campaign, I really do hope that this right here is confirmation that the next game will have a campaign, but more about this topic later. A return to class-based gameplay is something that shouldn't even have been a selling point to begin with. One of the biggest turnoffs of 2042 for a majority of players was dice stitching the class system in favor for hero shooter like characters. While the system itself never really bothered me to begin with because all it was was putting a face to a gadget, I completely understand why everyone else saw it as a hero shooter. With funny quips and all. And I mean funny in the ironic way because how the fuck do you guys think this was okay with the lore you were building around these characters? Don't be sad, this is just how it works out sometimes. Yeah, world famine. Countless of civilians displaced. Yeah, it really gets me all joyful to kill people. Don't be sad. This is just how it works out sometimes. But the real fumble was the horrible presentation of these characters. You see, this system was always just an evolution from the system seen in Battlefield 5. A simple name change to these guys and releasing them via the class system we have now would have been far better choice by the creative heads at DICE. But now in the new game, we'll be seeing the return of the classic class based system. And my ultimate guess is that we'll be getting the, the classic Battlefield 3 and 4 classes Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon. With my hope being that they properly flesh out the system that they did in Battlefield 5, with each class having up to three different combat roles that can further help with your specific class customization. Basing the game in current time will welcome a lot of players wanting that Battlefield 4 experience once again, and with the text that it's exploring current modern day combat, it'll be very likely to see more drones in this game than what was offered in 2042. Probably seeing stuff like Casper's drone once again, and like the scrap specialist from 2042, Hale, return with his anti-armor RCXD, but modern combat also means a lot more recognizable vehicles are able to be used. My my only hope is that more factions are introduced. While the topic of 64 players opposed to 128 is the topic for another video, I'll spoil it and just tell you that it just all revolves around map design. 
Does the map flow properly? Does the map have the right amount of lines of sights? Does the map feel unique and different from the last? That's what ultimately matters to me whenever I read about player counts and since the devs were not and I mean not prepared for 128 player maps as they released maps intended for like the next Arma 3 update. With recent maps like Reclaimed and Redacted, it shows that the perfect sweet spot for the time being is still that 64 players. While my hopes for the franchise moving forward is still eventually increasing that player number again, they just don't know how to make maps that accommodate that player base. And it's not like it can't be done. Other games have come again showing that it's possible and it's indeed fun. You're going to what are you gonna do to me? So shrinking down the player count just makes it easier for devs working as they are more comfortable making maps for that 64 player count. In order to compete in today's gaming market, you need that third mode. That third gimmick mode that entices people to not only spend money on the game, but to more importantly spend money on those microtransactions and Battlefield is no different. Battlefield has tried their hand to bring in more casual players to the game with a gimmick mode, twice. All just failing due to one specific thing. It was behind a paywall called owning the game. The reason why stuff like Apex Legends, Warzone, and every Gen Alpha's favorite game, Fortnite succeeded is because of a simple phrase, free to play. The barrier of entry comes down from how much money do you have to how much storage your device has. And with that barrier of entry being free, that means absolutely everyone can play the game without risk of buyer's remorse. And as seen in Warzone, entice people to buy the main game to play. Not because they like it, but to literally just level up guns found in that year's update in preparation to play Warzone, almost like a pre-game warm-up. Warzone has grown so much that when you say you want to play some COD, Warzone is usually what comes first to people's minds. Battlefield 5 was going to give gamers the first taste of Battle Royale done the Battlefield way. Firestorm was released to the world and it was actually, you know, pretty good with all things considered. It had everything you expect from Battlefield when it comes to destruction and had exclusive mechanics like vehicles working completely different to those found in the main game. The project was led by Criterion and Salt, with two updates coming to the game before it ultimately being axed. Almost like releasing a paid experience at a time when all your competitors are releasing free to play experiences was a bad thing from the start. The franchise has also shot their shot with the extraction genre with Hazard Zone. Now this on the other hand was just bad. The extraction genre is a simple genre to understand. You drop in, get the objective, and then you try to get the fuck out alive with everything you've gotten. While you could definitely see the foundation of something, nothing was really ultimately done with the mode as it was quickly put down as the franchise restructure happened. Also citing that one of the reasons was for poor player retention. Once again, you can't really release a game mode like this and put it behind a paywall. These modes are best being free to play and that looks like what's going to happen for the next game. Ripple Effect's new experience is said to be a battle royale that will be following the same path that Warzone initially followed, which is to be free to play experience that ties in with multiple games changing its aesthetic with each new game. Can't wait for them to also copy Verdansk. While me and other people think that it's stupid, it sort of makes sense as these game modes aren't here to entice already existing fans. It's not here for you and I, those who love the franchise already, it's here to entice new players, to snatch another group of idiots into the franchise. An evolution for the franchise if you will, just like how it was an evolution for Call of Duty. Enticing a brand new sea of people with something they already like. Battle Royale. And I'll be the first to admit, I'd rather play a Battle Royale any time of the day than any fucking milsim servers with like 1000 damage amplifier. Come on guys, we can do so much more with fucking Portal. But there's also another game mode coming here that's not the norm for Battlefield. That gets me really, and I mean really excited. The mode is called Gauntlet. Gauntlet sees teams of players go at it at an objective based modes that sees the lowest scoring team being kicked out after each mission. That sounds a lot like- Yup, this is their answer for those wanting that competitive scene back in Battlefield. It's to steal what their ex-developers did. Yes, the competitive scene actually exists for Battlefield and hasn't been seen since Battlefield 4. EA and DICE have tried to bring back that esports fanbase multiple times with Battlefield 1's incursions mode and Battlefield 5's similarly competitive mode that both got cancelled. They have always expressed interest into returning to that competitive scene, but just have never found the correct way to interject themselves and with them taking heavy inspirations from the finals, shows that they may finally have confidence to show themselves back. Now I only hope is that gunplay for this game is satisfying, and that the mode is actually supported for longer than 3 weeks.
Now, originally this segment was talking about Marcus Leto's departure from Ridgeline Games. The man who co-created Halo was brought in and given a brand new studio to help him make a brand new single player narrative for the next title. I was gonna present two possible outcomes and reasons being. One being that he was brought in to oversee the project in a pre-production phase and once the project was now in active development, he would leave to pursue other things. A practice done time and time in the industry. And the second option being that he had a falling out with EA because of creative differences. He wanted one thing and EA wanted another thing, and no middle ground was ever found. But as of today, there's no need for speculation, as we found the truth. February 28th, 2024, EA laid off a whopping 670 people today. Many projects like Respawn's first person bounty hunter game was cancelled, and Ridgeline Games, a brand new studio meant to do one thing and one thing only, create a Battlefield single player experience. All we know right now is that there is a restructuring coming internally at EA as a whole. They are no longer reportedly working on licensed IPs and Battlefield Studios are seeing a shakeup. The single player experience will now be left in the hands of Criterion and with producers Danny Isaac and studio head Darren White taking up the mantle that Marcus Leto left after his leaving. Some refugees of Ridgeline Games will be going to ripple effects while the others are just left out in the Seattle rain. Another casualty is the corporate greed because of course in a year filled with breaking profits it's always best to lay off staff to keep more of that money. EA's Laura Mill will go on to say that the Battlefield project is making meaningful progress and that they have the largest battlefield team in franchise history which you know it's just a bunch of words to me now in late 2022 ea said they were all in on battlefield then showing all their teams working on the franchise at that point point. and in 2024 two of those studios are not only not working on the franchise anymore but have flat out just closed their doors and one canceled game while passion for the project still exists amongst the devs left writing is on the walls for everyone that all it takes is one bad financial report and all those countless of sleepless nights have gone to waste Corporate greed is something that no one wins from, but the suits who are so disconnected from the world around them. Everything is never done in the interest of players and developers alike, but all done to get the most profit with the smallest workforce. And also my thoughts go out for anyone who's laid off. Getting your passion project ripped from you has to do something to you mentally. Seeing all your hard work just be discarded as if it never happened must have a negative effect on you. So when I read comments like these saying that all is well on the home front, I just can't help but laugh because all those studios working on the title are very clearly having an internal feud with EA. Corporate meddling always gets in the way of passionate devs. This news definitely gave everyone working on the title a sour taste in their mouth. And as a result, a lot of great talent are now currently looking for jobs when they were already promised a place to stay. But hey, at least I can play my old games. I mean, at least I can play these games on the actual platforms they released on. But at least I still have Helldivers too, so that's good. Oh my God! <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> no, the boy dead. The boy dead. The boy dead. He don't wait up. He dead.